Hi, this is Gary with MacMost.com. On today's episode, let's take a close look at the Mail Composition window. So it's easy to overlook the Mail Composition window. If you go File, New Message, usually at this point you have a singular purpose in mind, which is to compose this message or reply to one and get that thing sent. You don't actually really look at this window very often. It's not like Safari or Pages or something where you kind of stare at the window for a while. It appears, you do your task, and then you dismiss it. So it's very easy to miss what's here. So let's take a look. You've got at the top here some fields you can fill in with things like who you're sending the email to, the subject line, and where it's coming from. Notice and from you can select any of your email accounts. Here are all my sample email accounts and I can have it going from any one of those. These two are even the same email account. They're just versions of it, the me.com and icloud.com versions. And I can switch it so that when somebody replies to this email it comes to that specific address. You also have a pull down for signatures and you've got your large area here for composing your message. Now you have some control here over which fields here are here at the top. If you click on this button you can for instance add the BCC field, the blind carbon copy field. And I can put addresses in there of people that will get this email but nobody else sees who they are as opposed to the CC field and everybody sees who gets those. I can add or remove various ones very easily here. I can even add a reply to field which can make it look like my email is coming from this address but then I could put something different in the reply to. So when somebody hits reply it goes there instead. Um, and there's even a priority field, not used by everybody, but if you know somebody pays attention to their email priority, you can set something to say a high priority uh, to make sure that they pay attention to it. So there's a lot of different options you can do here with these fields. Now you have some other buttons here at the top as well. For instance, instead of copying and pasting or dragging and dropping an attachment into a message, you can use this button here to simply select it. Uh, you can also bring up some controls here for the fonts, font sizes and styles and things like that. Keep in mind anytime you use anything like this it's going to go beyond plain text. It really depends on what the receiver at the other end is using. If they're not using Mac Mail, if they're using a completely different type of way of reading email, maybe web based, uh, maybe through their ISP, maybe uh, they're on an old Windows machine with an old email client, they may not see exactly what you're sending. But most people nowadays will be able to see simple things like bold and coloring and, and some fonts of course. Uh, if they don't have the font on their machine that might be a problem as well. So you want to use this stuff with caution but a little bold here and there for emphasis doesn't hurt. Um, you also have the ability to really easily attach photos, show or hide the photo browser there and then you can easily attach photos. Um, and then you have this little thing here where you can bring up the stationery and this attaches ultra customized uh, emails um, with all sorts of graphics. And a lot of people have trouble reading these if they're not using Mac Mail because they have to support all the different things that are in these messages. You can actually add more to here. You can control click here and customize the toolbar and add some different things to it. So for instance the ability to quickly switch between uh, rich text and plain text is a button that you could add in or be able to add a list in or easily format lists, uh, things like that. Uh, you can also add this button. It's kind of interesting. You can add this append button here and this allows you to append other messages. So the message I had selected was this iBooks email here and you can see I appended it in there. It's kind of like forwarding an email but I can actually forward multiple emails by selecting them in this window and then hitting this button there. So there's all sorts of interesting functionality if you poke around in what's available in these buttons. Now the message body area that you're typing in is just like any other area you might type in whether it's in a web browser or in pages or in text edit. There's a lot of different things you can do. Uh, for instance if you select the text and hit control and click uh, you get all these controls here like uh, spelling and grammar controls, uh, substitutions whether or not you use smart quotes and smart dashes and things like that, transformations like I can make the entire thing uppercase if I wanted to uh, without having to retype it. So there's all sorts of different things that you can do in here that you can add just like you can anywhere else that you're editing text just about. Now here I've attached an image by just dragging and dropping it into the message body and Yosemite adds the ability to do things with images and PDFs. I get this little button here when I roll the mouse over and I can click and go to markup and now this gives me some tools for editing 
here and I can draw on it for instance. I can add some text. Uh, all sorts of different things that I can do to this image if I want um, before I send it. And I hit Done and you can see it has edited the image and now when it, the person received it they will receive the image with these marks.